In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you something so extraordinary that hopefully it opens up a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to NFTs. My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome back to my channel. In order for you to fully grasp the information I'm going to share with you in this video, we have to take a look at the current NFT state. As we can see, there's many NFTs out there. And yes, the sentiment is low. But regardless, the technology is strong. And that's why companies, big companies, have started to adopt the technology. That's why it's important for us to always innovate and build. And if we take a closer look at an NFT collection, in this case, the Sketchy A Book Club NFT collection, which is coincidentally my uh, artwork collection, so go and check it out. But anyways, if we look at this on Blur.io, we can see that each individual NFT artwork can be traded on this beautiful platform. And essentially, the NFT lives on a contract, right? And this contract follows a standard. In this case, it follows the ERC721 standard. And what this means is that each and every contract that implements this specific standard will have the specific functions that the interface requires, such as balance of and so forth. But they can also be custom functions. But you see, with NFT contracts and in smart contracts in general, once a contract has been deployed, it is immutable. We cannot add more code to the contract unless it's redeployed. Now, this fact actually inspired me to make this video. Because how boring is it if you have an NFT and you wanted to add some extra functionality, maybe some pizzazz, but you cannot do that because it's immutable and you have to redeploy a full contract. Well, with the method that I'm going to show you today, you can experiment, have some fun and add some extra functionality uh, to an NFT collection. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you right now, how to add some extra functionality uh, to any kind of NFT collection. And for this example, let's say we have some sort of NFT collection and we want to add uh, the ability for a person who owns that NFT to give that NFT a nickname. And the nickname should be on chain, right? So uh, we want to create some sort of wrapper contract that's going to not wrap the full NFT, but reference it in some sort of way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Before we can get there, let's get a workspace set up in remix.ethereum.org. To do this, I'm going to click here on workspaces and create a new workspace. Remix now has this nice handy tool uh, where I can create a starter template. And I'm going to select the ERC721 as well as Mintable and just click on OK. All right. So now there's this token. And for now, I'm just going to deploy it. So I'm going to head over here to my deploy section and click on deploy. It doesn't really matter, but we do need some sort of reference NFT contract uh, in the testing environment because we are not on the main network. So we have this NFT token and here is the actual contract now. So let's go ahead and mint us some NFTs. I'm just going to grab this address of this account then head over here to save mint, paste in the address and mint maybe NFT1 and NFT2. Okay, so we should now be having two NFTs. So if we paste our address in there, we can see we have two NFTs on this address of this contract. And if we copy this, this will copy the address of this NFT contract. This is important for the next step. But before we move on, it's crucial to understand that at this stage, we have done nothing special. Think of this as an existing NFT contract on the main network. We've just recreated one and minted two NFTs on a test environment. So nothing special here. Now only we're going to move on to the special part. So click here on your file explorer and right click here on the contracts folder, create a new file. And I'm going to call this my wrapper contract dot soul. Okay. So now we have this my wrapper contract. You can call it whatever you need to. 
um, maybe it's a good idea to name it the NFT collection and then maybe extension or wrapper, whatever you want to call this. But now we can go ahead and create our contract. So we're going to call this contract my wrapper contract, the same as the name of this file. And let's also remember to add our pragma line as well as this import. Now this import is the standard of the ERC721 and it's the interface. That's why it is I ERC721. And this is the um, interface that we are going to use and you'll see how we can then reference another contract that's base of this interface. We are now going to code in Solidity and if you have no idea how to use Solidity, the language, or you want to understand it even more, I do have a free 54 video course here on YouTube. So go and check it out if you want to follow along and understand the code that we are going to be talking about. Okay, so let's carry on. We left off with understanding that this import is merely the interface. It is not the actual implementation. But why is this important? Well, we would like to use this standard as a type and define maybe a private variable called NFT contract. And essentially what this tells Solidity is that this variable at some stage in our contract is going to become uh, a contract that implements the standard, meaning that it will have access to the functions that the ERC721 contract has. And now all we need to do is implement the constructor function to take in an address and assign it to our variable. And this will then be wrapped and passed as an IERC contract standard. And now we technically have access to the on-chain quote unquote NFT collection. What this means is that now we can implement whatever functionality we want to and this contract now will have reference to the underlying NFT contract. How wonderful is that? I do have to say that this is not battle tested and you need to do your own research before implementing this in production. It's just something I want to add whenever you are watching these tutorials uh, because I get these cool crazy ideas and I just want to share them with everyone. But okay, let's go and implement this nickname functionality uh, to this contract. And this is very simple. We'll start off by adding a mapping of uint to string. We'll make it private and then we'll just name it underscore token nicknames. This gives us a way to store the nicknames that we are going to put inside of this contract. Now it is going to reference a uint which is essentially going to be the token ID but we are going to need to know uh, if an owner who tries and changes a nickname is the owner of an NFT, okay? So let's go ahead and add this function. It is a simple function, it says own NFT, and it takes in the owner, which is the address, the token ID, it's internal, and it just simply returns a boolean. This then goes ahead and calls the underlying contract owner of function and passes in the token ID. And if it's equal to the owner, uh, we should get back uh, the boolean. True. If it's not, we'll get false. Now for the last pieces of the puzzle. And that is to do with these two functions. Set token nickname and then get token nickname. The set token nickname takes in the token ID and the actual nickname that you want to give this token. It has a simple require statement and uses our new owns NFT function to make sure that this message.sender actually owns the actual token in the underlying contract. Then we go and we take the token nicknames mapping and we update it with the token ID as the key and the name as the value. For the get token name function, it's simple. We pass in the token ID. Um, and it simply returns the actual value of that nickname by referencing the mapping and passing in the key, which is the token ID. And that is the complete solution. Now, how do we go and deploy this? Well, in the constructor, we need some sort of contract address. 
Well, luckily, previously, we deployed this NFT contract. So let's go and copy this. Go up and make sure that we now are on our wrapper. Provide that address of the previous contract, the NFT contract, and click Deploy. We can now see that our new contract is here below. And here we go. The new contract looks way smaller uh, than an actual NFT contract. And that's because we are not surfacing um, all those functions of the actual NFT uh, contract itself. Of course, you can do that. And to be honest, the possibilities by following this kind of example are truly endless. Um, but for this purpose, I'm going to now set the nickname of the tokens that I minted before. So essentially what I can do now is I can simply go and open this up and pass in the token ID. I do know that I own token ID one. And in here, I'm just going to name this Daniel. I want to make this Daniel my name and click transact. And it was successful. And of course, if we want to retrieve that nickname, we can now just simply pass the ID and we get Daniel. Now it will not work if we try and update token ID three because that will fail because we don't own that token in the underlying contract. So I hope you start uh, seeing how this could really help adding extra functionality to an already existing contract. Now you might ask, well, it's not really on the contract and that's a bit of a worrying thing. Well, the thing is, these wrapper contracts can work wonderfully with your ecosystem. For example, if you have an application which communicates and pulls data from the blockchain of your NFT contract, you can include this wrapper contract as well. So simultaneously, you can uh, pull in the data that's associated on these wrapper contracts. And that way you can store extra information, maybe link to tokens, do breeding mechanisms. You can go wild. These are not, um, like I said, battle tested, but it is a way to add extra functionality. And I am really looking forward to seeing what everyone's going to be doing with these, uh, this kind of concept. It's been around for a while, but I don't see a lot of videos on it. And I thought I'll just highlight that today. And probably the best thing about this way of doing things is that if the underlying NFT is ever transferred, then automatically the new owner gets access to all sorts of these wonderful little mechanisms that was added. Of course, you can check for transfers and so on and maybe um, reset some values based on if that happened. You can get really creative. But like I said, I encourage you to go and try it out, have some fun and just test it for yourself. But anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this video as always and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.